have to get used to being in each other's way. Given all this really sucky stuff, would you still do this again? Well, I think actually... Hey friends, today we're going to talk about 10 reasons why RV life isn't always the best. Like we've said before, things are going to break. So it's no secret, things break all the time in RVs. Yeah, RVs are you know, both a car and a house and they are not made to really do either <laughs> thing the perfect way. And so yeah, things are just going to break, whether it's something going down the road, something shaking loose, electronics going bad, anything like that can happen and you just have to be prepared for it. And the hardest part, I think, is that you don't know what on your RV is going to break until you get out there. Because every RV is a little different. Everyone's going to have a different issue. At least for us, living in an RV requires a lot of scheduling. And so you can't always pick when something breaks. And that can really cause havoc with your schedule. Not so much when you're living in a house or in an apartment where you're going to be in the same place the entire time. Yeah, there's almost a domino effect because you have to leave and get there at certain dates. And so if you throw in repairs and unpredictability on that, it can get really stressful. RV life requires a type of planning that you're probably not used to. RV life is very exciting, and most of the time that's a good thing. But sometimes you really wish it would go on autopilot for you. So I work a full-time 9 to 5 job. I have to be in a place where I can dial in, where I can work, and where I have some kind of internet access. Paige, on the other hand, is she's a little bit more flexible, but is also working full-time. Uh, we are not on vacation when we're doing this, and that requires a certain kind of scheduling for us. We generally like to know where we're going to be uh, within about a month or so. We want to know that we have a place to be. We've done a little bit of boondocking and things like that, but it's actually always, always been planned. As we're, we're recording this right now, we're only about three weeks planned. We have a gap of about what, six to eight weeks in between campsites in the middle where we, we actually have no idea where we're staying. Yep. And for some people that's normal. Um, although there, there are a lot of people that like to just fly by the seat of their pants and travel where the winds may take them. I also find that they also tend to then complain that they can't get into places <laughs> that they want to be. Yeah, it's, you know, there are pros and cons. What we typically like to do is plan the big places where we know we want to be at a certain time. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave open a certain amount of dates in between and then when we get closer we'll fill those in with different parks, boondocking, harvest hosts, etc. Yeah, and that works pretty well for us. Although sometimes you just don't want to plan. Yeah. Like we're going to have to go and plan the seven between, I'll tell you, as we're filming this, it's been a really long week. We're both exhausted, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're going to have to do that, whether we want to or not. Yeah, we're going to be traveling pretty consistently on weekends for a couple months, and that will probably take about eh, one to three hours, depending on how picky I'm being that night. Yeah, and it'll be fun, but sometimes, sometimes you just wish it were on autopilot. Yep. Sometimes you're always going to feel a little lost. So, a lot of times in your life, you're on autopilot. You go to the same grocery stores, you go to the same hairdressers, mm -hmm. you go down the same roads. I'm sure all of you have been driving home from work and all of a sudden you're home and you have no idea how you got there. <laughs> uh, well, with the way we've been traveling, where we're in a new place at least every month, we don't get to experience that anymore. We had to learn the area every single time. And especially the way that we're traveling, like we will just start to get used to an area and then we will leave <laughs> yeah. and it, it gets it gets kind of interesting and actually we typically know that we're going to start getting bored then as well this is a constant workout for your nervous system there's always something new and exciting but that also means um, new and boring as well yeah yeah and it, it's hard to relax sometimes when you're doing that like you have to figure out how to relax in novelty which is a completely different skill set i'd say yeah, you have to make room for it. But on the on the flip side, I like the new grocery stores. Even though it takes a little time to figure it out, you get lost, I find new stuff. And it's like I'm doing the show Chopped. Every time I go to a grocery store, I find a new ingredient. You know, so there's always a flip side to that. Mm -hmm. You won't see your friends as often. Now, we tend to be people that move around a bunch. Neither of us, we moved from Cleveland down to Dallas. Neither of us were from Cleveland no, in the first we place. <laughs> um, even though we had a number of friends there, gained a number of friends in Dallas as mm -hmm. well. We now, I think we have friends scattered throughout the globe at this point. Yeah, it'd be fun sometime to do a map and do the pins in it. Cause I, <laughs> so I think it would be all over the place. So we, we were already kind of used to having remote friends and people that we haven't seen for a long time and mm -hmm. being able to just kind of pick up with them at some point but a lot of people are not used to that and on the road a lot of your interactions are what I would call transient. Yeah I you know people are really friendly but you're maybe gonna see them just a few times before one or both of you moves again. 
And that can be really hard to get used to. You know, if you're used to having that same community of people that you see every week, that can be really hard. I've seen people get really lonely on the road. Yeah. Uh, and that, that can be a problem. Like we said, we were a little bit used to that. It wasn't a major issue for us, but mm -hmm. it, you know, it has been lonely at times where you like, we would like to go out with friends. You know, I was part of a big maker space in Dallas and being, I saw a lot of the same people every single week. Mm -hmm. um, same in Cleveland. We were kind of the people that held, you know, various parties and things like that for everybody. And we don't do that anymore. So it's, it's kind of a really interesting shift um, in your life. If you're going to move, you know, be moving all the time. I will say the technology helps and to make the most of that. So things like Zoom and texts and ways of keeping in touch with your loved ones on the road, just make sure you're at least virtually talking to them. And I will say that uh, absence does make the heart grow fonder. Uh, we've had some really good reunions with people, you know, just stopping by and seeing your folks and seeing our friends on the road and to really make the most of that. Yeah. And there are a number of RV groups that you can join as well. <laughs> you can meet up with people on the road. There are lots of YouTubers that I know do rallies and things as well. We're part of escapees and they have all sorts of events all over the country. We have not made it to one yet, but we've only been on the road for about you know, a little over six months now. So just haven't had the time. We've been <laughs> just kind of enjoying the, <laughs> enjoying and exploring on your own at, at this point. So. Could be fun. Yeah. Look in the description for some links for some of those groups. I can't turn around without hitting something. So even as we're filming right now, Paige likes to shake her head a lot, and it is shaking the rig as she does so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I'm sure I'm doing it as well. At least with our Class C, we do not have levelers on it, which might make it a little bit more stable, so we're still on the suspension, and it shakes pretty consistently our our cat jumps down and it will shake a strong wind will shake it and mm -hmm. you just you, you you don't have the space if you're used to having a 3,000 foot you know, square foot house if you're used to, used to having like a couple acreages to walk around this is not it and I would say even if you've been in a tiny apartment just the fact that you can feel so much especially yeah. if you've got a rig like ours is a huge difference like he's not kidding I, I'll get up in the morning sometimes if I'm having a cup of coffee and, and he happens to still be in bed I can feel him roll over on the couch <laughs> which is not how an apartment normally works yeah. and you have to get used to being in each other's way mm -hmm. uh, we can't you know, can't really pass by each other in nope. our hallway. There's not room for two people there. It's a one lane road. <laughs> but yeah, it's, you, you have to get used to that. And if you're a bigger family, and I have seen some rather large families move around, you have to get used to being in each other's way all the time. Yep, yep. Definitely takes a, a completely novel kind of patience, I would say. Yeah. And that's, it, I will say that it is easier when it is nicer outside and we can spend mm -hmm. more time outside. It's not as inhospitable as sometimes it can be. In the winter months or in rainy seasons, it can wear on your nerves a little bit. Yeah, we've, we've been in a place this week where we can't put the awning out because it's windy, even though it's been sunny out. We, we can't really do much outside. I think we're getting kind of cabin fever, honestly. Yeah. There is a severe lack of storage in an RV. So at least in a Class C, like we have, but to a certain extent, even in Class A's and fifth wheels, there is not a massive amount of storage here. No. You're not going to have a junk closet, junk drawer, random bits and pieces, things that you keep for some day. That's not going to exist in this life. Yeah, storage is always going to be limited regardless of your rig. It's just a matter of how limited. Yeah. Now, we are typically some of the most limited in our particular choice of RV, though, but we knew that going into it. We chose that. We did. Know and knowing that. Mm -hmm. I think a travel trailer might be uh, a little worse. It depends on depends. the travel trailer. Yeah. Yes, I think there are some worse than we... And obviously, like, a teardrop is going to be worse than us. Yeah. yeah. But those aren't really... Like, I, I think there are some people living full-time There are people in, living in, in teardrops. teardrops. But, mm -hmm. Um, so you just have to be judicious with what you pick and what you bring. Like some of my biggest weight allowance was actually tools that I brought. Yes. Um, but that was also getting into the previous point of things are going to break and it's actually come in handy because I can fix things in like an hour because I have most of the tools to do things rather than waiting potentially days for somebody to come visit. Oh, definitely, so, definitely. But yeah, other things that we've chosen, some creature comforts, electronics, and gear that we need to <laughs> work, honestly. Mm -hmm. And honestly, not much else. Cooking gear, uh, you know, clothes, but that is actually the extent of what we have. We don't have that many clothes. No. We really don't. I will say that the, the lack of extra storage rears its head in very unexpected ways. Like every time we go grocery shopping, we have to really think about where we're even gonna put things for like the week. Yeah. 
Like if we, if we if on a lark, we're like, oh, we're gonna get a bunch of soda. All of a sudden it's like, okay, well, where do we put the soda? <laughs> <laughs> Which is really intense. And, and one, one ways that we, some of the ways that we've fixed this, we have cla collapsible totes yes. um, that we keep around and those can serve as temporary storage. Um, we won't necessarily travel with those. It's usually if we're staying in a place and we need some extra groceries for that week or something. Same, mm -hmm. we have a bunch of bags, uh, reasonable bags and things like that, that we can kind of move things around in if we have a temporary glut of stuff yes. um, that we need to sort through or figure out. Yeah, so I think it's good to kind of find those flex spaces and those, those small lightweight accessories for when it does overflow a little bit. You never quite know what the rules are going to be. So every campground is going to be different. There's going to be different rules, different traditions, there's going to be different events, different ways that the garbage is collected, different ways that the grass is mowed, different ways that they like to have you hook up your RV, different mm -hmm. ways that they want you to even check in mm -hmm. with your RV. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to quite know what those always are. Sometimes you'll get everything through an email, sometimes you'll find it right when you're signing in and on their website. I've had it happen where I don't even know all the rules until I fully checked in and I'm at my site. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it, it, it can lead to some stress sometimes, like, can I wash my RV at this campground? Am I, am I allowed to drive to my site on my own, or do they require an escort? And everything in between with a lot of these campgrounds. And you're right. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes they'll even have the rules on the website one way, and then when you come to the day of and you're driving up, they'll send you a text telling you something different. That actually happened at our most recent campsite. We were told the check-in process was one way, and then I got a text saying, oh, never mind. I just pull right into your spot. And so all of a sudden we were looking at the campground map while he's trying to drive and do the rig, you know, to figure out where we needed to go. <laughs> Ratface decided to show up. <laughs> Say hello to everybody, Ratface. Speaking of not knowing what the rules are, mm -hmm. so as I was saying before Ratface inserted himself into this lesson here, we didn't even know where our campsite was, how to pull in, so I'm trying to figure this out while he's driving and I'm trying to show him how to pull into the site while he's driving because we didn't even know what we were doing. I mean, we, we were fine. Yeah. We were fine. But it but it was stressful. But then there was like, I think two campgrounds ago where we literally checked in and we were handed a brochure that had a set of rules and then a printed piece of paper that had the same set of rules but different. Yeah. And so we found generally it is best that you just ask for clarification if yes. you if you have any questions about anything it's generally better to just ask it's better for you to ask and not have somebody then be angry at you um mm -hmm. because a lot of these places can also kick you out for any reason yep yep and when you ask just be as kind as possible don't be like hey this is one thing this is the other what's the deal blah 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 just just be like hey i want to do the right thing what's the right thing like yeah, and just, as kind as possible just be a reasonable adult and i think everything will work out for you you're gonna have to change the way you do chores. So when we were in an apartment, we had a dishwasher and a washer and dryer right in our apartment. Yeah, we were a little bit spoiled. Yeah, we were. That is not the case in this RV. There is no dishwasher, there is no washer and dryer. Some class A's have them, although they can be a little fussy and not everybody okay. likes having them. When we're on the road, we're using laundromats and we're washing everything by hand. And that includes, I mean, that's in a sink that's probably about half the size that I think I'm personally used to, honestly. Yes, I would say. It's, it's big enough, but only just. Yeah. Luckily, RV parks almost always have laundry rooms. It's actually very rare that the ones that we stay at, anyway, don't have a nice laundry room. So it's not too inconvenient, but I've had to get used to it. I've had to get used to carrying quarters. You know, I've had to get used to timing it, laundry etiquette, sharing the machines with other people. You know, it's been a, it's been a learning curve and it's been something else that I didn't have to deal with before. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that are used to doing that and are used to not having dishwashers, yes. etc. Yeah. We were, we've been a little bit spoiled in that regards, but it, it was definitely a negative. Getting packages can be a pain in the I'm just going to lead with an example. Uh, I needed to get, there was a recall on our electric bikes and we needed to get a replacement part delivered so that I could upgrade them. They did not say when they were going to send them. Nope. They just said, hey, we need your address. We're going to send it to you. I don't know where I'm going to be when they send them because I don't know when they're sending them. So, well, luckily we both have a mail service and thankfully some loving parents that are willing to let, let us have them forward things for us. And we're able to get things forwarded. But it's just one more level of complexity and logistics that we have to deal with. You're always right on top of your neighbors. So unless you're out in New Mexico, Arizona, boondocking without a soul for 30 miles, you're probably going to be right next to somebody. Yeah, we've had a 
few times where the RV park was only partly booked and then we had the whole street to ourselves, but a lot of times there's someone right there. Yep. And there's lots of strategies for managing it. You know, if you have all of your windows open, you're going to notice. We usually strategically close a few just so we feel a little bit more kind of separated and alone, but they're there. You can hear them, especially if there are children about or dogs barking, etc. It's just something that's going to happen. Thankfully, we had lived in big cities for a number of years and you get used to people being right there when you live in a city. So it wasn't that different, but I do think that if you came from more of a country situation, having your own house on a couple yeah. acres of land, it would be a big adjustment. One way I like to deal with it is I use white noise machines and fans and things like that, especially when I'm trying to sleep. I get I get disturbed really easily, especially if I'm falling asleep and somebody slams a car door or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, during the day, if Justin is kind of working in his office and the neighbors are kind of being louder if I feel like they're right there sometimes I'll go you know to a lounge area in the resort or somewhere else in the resort where there's no other people in, in whatever RV park we're in and just kind of find a place where there isn't anybody because a lot of times the common areas are pretty pretty low use a lot of people are sitting in their their RVs or they're out sightseeing I've been known to work in lounges or near laundry areas all over the place and kind of combine it with my laundry time which has been nice so Justin given all this really sucky stuff would you still do this again? Well, I think actions speak louder than words, and we're already planning out our next three to four months. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going at it, even with some of the sucky parts. Yeah, I think even with the sucky parts, it's been one of the best things that we've ever done. Yeah, this has been a really nice adventure. It's been we've seen lots of things and experienced lots of things, and I think we'd like to continue doing that. Well worth it. So we're generally not this negative. No, we're actually very positive people. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be doing a corollary to this very soon where we'll talk about the 10 best things. Yep. So look for that video and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. And if there's anything else that sucks that we missed, drop it in the comments.